Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Oh me, oh my, the Crusader Ares Starfighter is now on sale for Concierge, at least anyway, and we have a load of details on the ship. So Concierge are the subset of backers that have spent a thousand dollars or more on the game. Madness, I know, but it should be available to everyone within about 24 hours. So uh, expect it by uh, either this evening or by tomorrow by sort of like 3 or 4 p.m. UTC. And if you want to purchase one, the ship is available for $220 store credit or $195 war bond. So um, if you're not using any store credit, it appears that it's a concept ship, though, and not flyable in 3.8. It comes in two variants, the Ion and the Inferno. And this equates to some quite reasonably major changes um, for each of the hulls, but at the same price. Both ships also have an alternative livery or skin in the form of the Radiance and the Ember, respectively. So the Radiance for the Ion and the Ember for the Inferno. The Crusader Ares is a powerful, heavy combat fighter that focuses on a single weapon as its main armament, allowing it to focus on a particular type of engagement based on which variant you go for. The ship is a single seater and is 27.2 meters by 30.2 meters by 5.5 meters while in flight anyway. Expect metrics for ships that are concepted now like this to very rarely change when it comes to ship sizes because of the new way they do their pipeline. They're pretty sort of like certain of ship sizes. It's entirely medium systems for components for the ships. Both ships have a unique size 7 weapon which appears to be a fixed to the hull, so it doesn't look like you can change that, although potentially in the future, maybe you'll be able to change it for other um, Psi 7 weapons. However, the Psi 7 weapons for the two variants seem to be um, very unique for them, um, and you wouldn't be able to get them any other ways. Both ships share a missile loadout of four size five missile slots, two of which are fixed slots, so four size three missiles there, and two of which are changeable slots, uh, four size three missiles as standard there. The ship has a focus on long range deployment, the ability to negate and disable capital class shields, high velocity weaponry, effective solo gunship engagement, and fleet leading power and defense based on which model you go for. The airy Starfighter chassis was conceived with large and capital ship engagement in mind, heavily fortified and able to operate independently for up to years at a time. Gunships and capital class vessels required a specialized approach not possible from a general purpose fighter. So before weaponry was considered, a next generation heavy fighter platform was devised to enable pilots and squadrons to intercept large ships in any environment this focus is apparent in the single seat cockpit with all vital controls instantly accessible by the pilot. Compact landing gear promotes easy landings and takeoffs on difficult terrain while externally accessed shield and power components enable quick maintenance from ground crews, so not internal uh, maintenance of those systems. Designed to scramble from an orbiting carrier or ground base, simple cockpit entry and single stick control ensure the ships are in the air quickly as possible. Bearing Applied Technology devised a SF-7 weapon series specifically for the Crusader Starfighter chassis. The chassis utilizes a fixed size 7 weapon mount, so fixed, not gimbaled, that not only allows a much larger weapon to be deployed on the ship of this size than normal, but enables the chosen gun to be integrated into the body and functionality of the ship. So it's not going to be a gimbaled weapon, this is a size 7 fixed weapon. Uh, there are some major system differences on each of the variants though. So the Ares Ion has an additional power plant and battery, giving it two medium power plants and batteries over the Infernal, uh, as well as an additional shield and cooler, giving it three of each of those systems, three shields and three coolers. All of them are medium size. The Ion focuses on its Psi 7 laser cannon, which is exclusive to the Ares Ion. Each shot effectively chips away at enemy shields and once down delivers high damage to armor and components. The SF7E rewards high accuracy with devastating per round damage, making it untouchable in the hands of a skilled marksman and patient pilot. Designed to lead the charge against capital ships and heavily armoured flotillas, the Ares Iron excels in spearheading a fleet of fighters and support ships. Its purpose-built bearing SF-7E, I can't, I can't say that very well for some reason, a laser cannon accurately delivers high-powered shots to quickly disable the shields of gunships and with the support of other Ares variants, efficiently in 
capacitate capital class vessels and additional power plant and cooler support the high energy requirements of the cannon alongside a further shield generator for increased protection against laser equipped combatants so basically that laser cannon is a longer range more snipery type weapon really high damage it's gonna be very high velocity so pretty accurate it's gonna be reasonably effective against smaller ships if you can hit them and bigger ships because you will easily be able to hit them, I suppose, with the larger ships. Let's take a look at the Ares Inferno, though. So this ship has a heavier hull than the Ion, but no additional components. So it has one power plant and one battery and two shields and two coolers. There is going to be a physical damage system in the game, the Star Citizen. They are going to be balancing the weapons, the shields, the armor. So expect heavier armor to have its place in the combat meta. I suspect that one of the other reasons that it's got less components effectively than the Ion is because it needs somewhere to store its sheer amount of ballistic ammo for the ship because it's estimated that that um, specific cannon that the Inferno has can fire an estimated 1900 rounds a minute. So the Ares Inferno focuses on its Gatling variant of its size 7 bespoke weapon for the Ares series. It unleashes a barrage of ballistic fire to quickly overwhelm small ships and leave bigger vessels struggling to react. The SF-7B is tailored to pilots looking to overwhelm the enemy with unrelenting fire. It's also an effective suppression tool, giving gunners nothing to do but take cover. I suspect that's very useful on the ground as well. Um, both um, variants of the ship seem like they'd be useful on the ground for different reasons, like um, the snipping ability uh, of the ion uh, taking out, I don't know, ballista and stuff like that, um, if, you, if you've got a, a good range on them. Um, and the General Inferno, great at just plowing down installations of ground troops. Conceived to single-handedly disable large vessels and small squadrons, the Ares Inferno it shines as a single point of defense, whether avoiding wider conflict by preemptively neutralizing threats or scrambling to tackle pirates. Its giant Gatling ballistic cannon breaks through shields to permanently damage armor and halt advancing forces. Increased armor all round ensures that the Inferno can better withstand ballistic attacks from gunships and anti-aircraft guns during planet-side assaults. Though capable alone, the Inferno is a potent ally to the Ion in capital ship hunting. The high-caliber armor-piercing rounds perfectly complement the Ion's shield-disabling shots to leave even the biggest ships vulnerable. So you have very different combat uses from the Ares variants. The Ion has better shields, more power, and a focused long-range high damage sort of alpha damage um, weapon. Pew, 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 snippy, snippy. The Inferno has better armor and a focus on closer range engagements with higher DPS and sort of like, if you do miss, well, you've got a load of other bullets flying towards the target. So sort of like consistent damage over time is the other thing there and we don't know really 100 how shields weapons and armor are all going to be balanced together will you be able to change weapons out in the future maybe but i don't believe that's an intention i believe that these weapons are effectively attached to the hull of your ship so you probably won't even be able to switch them between the variants so assume that those weapons are attached to the ship at least at this stage maybe in the future they'll go Ow, and now uh, we've got some other options you can have for the ship but i wouldn't expect that I'm going to be grabbing one of each of these ships, replacing my Hurricane and Super Hornet, or maybe my Vanguard, um, because I just... These are what I wanted for combat ships. I really like these on paper. I've wanted to have a big monoboat, sort of a single gun fighter for ages. I thought the Hurricane was sort of like that, but I do actually want it to be a single-seater fighter. There is a tendency to call the new concept ships sort of like game-breaking or the best especially when it comes to fighters and combat ships, but these will be balanced to their intended roles. Interceptors, I suspect, might be pretty effective against them or ships that can sneak up on them. I don't expect these will be super agile or anything. Um, they're, they're, if you come up from the rear or the sides of them, I suspect they're pretty vulnerable. Expect the ship to be available for everyone within the next 24 hours or so. At the moment, it's just at time of recording, available for concierge backers. And CCUs will be available for the ship as well. They're currently available for concierge. But I'm interested to know your take on the ship. Are you excited to have a big gunned monstrosity as a fighter like this and a heavy fighter? I am. I've wanted something like this for a while. Um, I know we don't want constant combat ships, agreed as well. But I do like Crusader as manufacturer. I do really like the look of this ship as well. Will it be sort of like an Alpha Strike blockade ship waiting monster at the end of jump points like you'd have in EVE Online? It's possible that if you are looking for something to do that, then 
the ion is probably quite well suited for you. Are you going to be picking one up yourself? Or uh, whether that's now or in game when they are eventually available? What do you think of its price tag? Um, those are all sort of questions I'd like to know what you think. Also, when do we think it's going to be in the game? Because they are working on the Crusader ships a lot next year. I suppose it's potential we could have it in 2020. They did say in the recent um, ship Star Citizen Live that they might work on all of the ships for the sort of like Crusader in a big glut uh, in a row. So maybe we could see it in 2020. It's not a huge ship, but we'll have to wait and see. Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for December, and to celebrate 2019, we are giving away a Carrick, the Mighty Explorer ship. It does also come with that Pisces and the Urza Rover 2. To be in for a chance of winning that, all you need to do is comment on any of my videos made during this month of December. Only one of your comments counts per video. Full details down below. A quick bit of shilling as well. Shadow provide remote access to high-spec gaming PCs as a subscription service, so you don't need to maintain your own gaming PC. You can leverage the power of your internet to turn your phone, tablet, laptop, or home PC into a monster. They are taking pre-orders for their new hardware configurations, scaling for 4K gaming, up to 32 gigs of RAM, and a GeForce Titan RTX, which I am very much looking forward to playing Star Citizen on. Links below and use the code BoardGamer to get a discount. There is also an additional offer if you are in the US as well that you get basically 50% off and you can even use my board gamer code on top of that as well for additional discount. Ah. I also use NordVPN, which I've decided to continue to support as they appear to have one of the best VPN services currently available at an affordable price. If you're looking for a VPN, consider them. Links below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you would like to share my video, comment, uh, subscribe, like, all that sort of jazz, ring the bell. That all helps content creators. Also, if you want to further support the channel even more, there's Patreon, there's direct donation, there's the YouTube join button as well, which gives you access to some more sort of like exclusive content from me. Thank you very much for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.